Um, today we're on trial because five or six British soldiers. Was well, it five or is it six? Six British soldiers. Five. Five colonists are dead, right? Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Um, left eleven uh, colonists severely injured or dead, and we don't think that's right. Great opening statement. Okay. Defense, your opening. Okay. Your Honor, we are here today because on the freezing cold night on March 5th at 9 o'clock at night, Captain Thomas Preston was guarding the sentry post. Post. Suddenly, a very irritated and sinister mob approached the house where the king's money was stored. The mob had intentions, intentions to viciously, viciously murder the guards who was protecting the, king, the king's money. And then they would steal it. Captain Thomas Preston sent a non-commissioner commissioned office officer and 12 men to protect the soldiers and the king's money. <clears throat> the mob started to maliciously curse and throw snowballs and rocks at the guards. The mob continued to violently attack. Having Hugh Montgomery was struck hard in the arm by a club moving mainly from the mob. <clears throat> In an act of self-defense, Montgomery was fired at the mob. Montgomery fired at the mob, which caused other soldiers to all fire. Five men were killed, and others were severely injured. At this point, the prosecution is going to call its first witness. So witnesses, you're reminded that you come up, you're going to be sworn in on David McCullough's 17th century. Oh, no, not this year. It's John Adams. So you will be sworn in on John Adams. Uh, prosecution, it's your witness, so who would you like to call it first? I'd like to call Mr. Knox. Okay, so Mr. Knox, please approach the bench. Yeah. Please report on I did not hear the captain say fired, but I did hear the other soldiers say they would fire upon the colonists if they came any closer. This is not a good reaction to the people sent to the They should have gently pushed them away and diffused the situation. Did you tell Captain Preston if your men fired, your life must be answerable? I did tell them that. They fired knowing that they must face the consequences, and now that they have, they must pay up. So. So we would find them guilty of murder? Yes. Thank you. Nope, you're not, you're not dismissed. You are. Okay. You're, 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 you have no further questions. Defense is your witness. So whoever is going to speak to Mr. Knox. Okay. Is it true that you attempted to defuse the situation and prevent any tragedies from happening? I did. I spoke to Captain Preston and I tried to tell him not fire upon the colonists. Do you know of the man who started the riot, or is this a group effort? This is a group effort. Do you agree that if the colonists did not provoke the soldiers, none of them, or none of this would have to happen? I did not, personally, me, I did not see anything thrown. I have only heard a couple of verbal insults. But I do not think that that is a good reason to fire upon defenses. So, Mr. Knox, you're dismissed. Right. Prosecution, would you please call your second witness? Um, Richard Palms. Yeah, Mr. Palms, would you please approach the bench? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Maybe. Were you or were you not near or directly behind Captain Preston? Would you heard him say something along the lines of, why don't you fire? Yes, I was near Captain Preston. And after that, did you hear something along the lines of, goddamn, why didn't you fire? Yes. 
Nothing further. Okay. Defense is your witness. Mr. Palms, why were you out in the middle of the freezing cold night when we put the king's money? I said if you're surviving and want to stand by, um, can you please repeat that? I said if you're surviving and want to stand by Captain Preston. So you said if you're surviving and want to stand by Captain Preston? I can't hear you, so I guarantee the jury probably can't hear either. So you gotta be loud, guys. Do you believe that the shots were fired of the fence or out of bloodlust? When you were intending on joining the riot and helping these colonials in their cause to steal the king's money? No. No further questions? Witness, you dismiss. So at this time, defense, you will call your first witness. Prosecution will ask their questions. You will call them. Captain Thomas Preston, please approach the bench. Please put your left hand on the whip, your right hand on the whip. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please. All right, prosecution, it's your witness. Um, the night of the shooting and the massacre, how many soldiers did you have with you? I called over 12 soldiers and one non-commissioned officer. So, when you were bringing them soldiers there, did you assume that you'd have to use your rifles and... No, I did not intend to fire on any of the colonists. It was just the colonists were getting out of hand. They were swearing at us, throwing snowballs, and hitting us with clubs, and that all escalated until they started attacking us, which caused us to fire. So, you were trying to tell your soldiers not to fire? Indeed, I, I did not want them to fire. So, if you were trying to tell them not to fire, then why did 11 soldiers, and probably more, why did, why were just so many gunshots fired? Because if... If we did not, if they did not fire, their lives would have been, would have been at risk. Those colonists probably wouldn't have spared the soldiers because they clearly wanted them dead. But you can never know that for sure. So yeah. why would you take someone's life when they didn't do anything, they didn't seriously harm anybody at that time? Well, they did harm, but they were throwing stuff at us. So snowballs hurt more, or hurt more than a gunshot? No, but... Nothing further. <laughs> Order. All right. So, defense is your witness. <laughs> Why did you send more soldiers out to guard the king's money along with the soldier that was already present? Well, I saw a big mob gathering by where the king's money was stored at the custom house, and so I heard from a townsman that they intended to carry the soldier from his guard, most likely murder him. So, I, I obviously couldn't let that happen, so I sent 12, more, 12 soldiers and one non-commissioned officer over there to help him out and protect him out. Were the soldiers' guns loaded, and if so, why? Yes, the soldiers' guns were loaded, but again, I had no intention to fire, and they were only loaded out of self-defense. The soldier, if the colonists knew that the guns weren't loaded, they would have no consequences for attacking us. And the guns were merely loaded to threaten them so they wouldn't attack. But it escalated. Did you give the soldiers the order to fire? No, I did not give the soldiers the order to fire. The colonists were swearing 
cursing at us, saying, damn you, fire if you will, fire, which, and if the colonists did not provoke the situation, then none of this probably would have never happened. Okay. Witness, you're dismissed. Defense, would you please call your next witness? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Prosecution is your witness. Did you say that you were the first to shoot? Yes. Did you have permission to say fire? Well, here's the thing. A <laughs> hundred colonists can say fire. You're kind of weird. Oh, once I say fire, the crowd goes wild. Isn't that kind of weird? No. It's only me that makes the orders, you know, all the colonists around us. But, Captain Preston, is your leader. Why did why did you say it? If you didn't have I was the first one to by yeah, Richard guy down at the tavern. For, you know, he's a tall, stout man. He could probably knock me out. When he has a big club with you know, oak, hits me in the arm, I'm down on the ground, I don't have my gun in my hand, slipped on the ice, on the ground. What am I gonna do? They can fulfill any threat that they made against me, my three children, or my wife. You think my children want to see me on the ground dead, getting clubbed to death, but his cones, his greedy cones, want to steal all the gold. This is like a kid's show. Like, why is this happening in real life? <laughs> okay. Uh, defense, you're a witness. I'm going to assault you. Harvey <laughs> 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 Hugh Montgomery, did you intend to fire at the colonist? Obviously not. That would be detrimental to my reputation as a private. It would completely blow me out of the water. Why would I want to shoot at a colonist who, you know, they throw rocks at me, maybe they throw a, a, club, a club of oak, but that doesn't make me the one who wants to. You know, shoot them in the brain. It doesn't make sense. So I'm just like shooting around them. I'm shooting everywhere but them. First place I shoot is at the tavern where Richard threw the club at me. If I shot and I didn't scare them, it would agitate them, it would exasperate the situation tenfold. Did you intend to kill the colonists, or was it a warning shot to scare them? Off? It was a warning shot to scare them off. But I guess it didn't work because we we're incredibly outnumbered. There would be no hope if they started to come at us. Final question. Why would you fire if it was detrimental to your reputation as a private? I felt the physical and verbal abuse that these columns gave me and my fellow soldiers would constitute enough as legal force. So we should have just let sleeping dogs lie because now we have to use legal force, force against you even if we don't want to because our lives are in danger. And now yours are too. Okay. Uh, witness your dismissal. At this point, prosecution, you'll make your closing arguments. As you can see, it is their fault the guns went off during the massacre because it is because Private Hume Montgomery did not have permission to shoot. And say five. <laughs> <laughs> Taking on report. Thank you. 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 The mob would not have had a second thought of killing all of us for the hatred of the British Empire. The acts of the British soldiers were only out of self-defense and had no intention to murder. If the mob did not curse and threaten us, throw, ball, throw snowballs, ice, and rocks at us, and assault us with clubs, none of this would happen. 
The colonists had no other reason to gather at 9 o'clock at night in the freezing March winter other than to attack us. Their actions were wicked and it was outrageous that they were not that will not get any punishment for their omnidious actions. What has occurred these past few days have been extremely tragic, but we will not rest until this trial is completed fairly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, the jury, you're going to take at most a 10 minute recess. And it doesn't mean we'll play it in the playground. Um, you're going to take a 10 minute recess. We're going to deliberate, talk amongst ourselves, and try to come up with a verdict. So, in real court, it, be, it has to be unanimous, which means everybody's on the same page. We're going to just go with the majority rule. All right, but I'm going to dismiss us to the back room. I want you guys to talk about it. I'll come in after about five minutes uh, and we'll figure out what your decision is. Okay, at this point, so 10 minute recess. Oh, shoot. Here we go again. It better not be the dance thing, but we'll be called over. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. We, the jury, find the defendants, Captain Thomas Preston, Private Pete Montgomery, and soldiers of the 29th Regiment in the King's Army not guilty. Gentlemen, you are free to go. Court is dismissed. <laughs> this court is now in session. The Honorable Benjamin Lind is now presiding. You may be seated. All right, today, this courtroom will hear the case of the City of Boston versus Captain Thomas Preston and Private Hugh Montgomery. The prosecution, it's yours. Opening statement. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. We have gathered here today to discuss the killing of multiple Boston colonists in, on the night of March, 1st, 70, March 5th, 1770. As a member of the prosecution team, me and my colleagues have come here today to prove that Captain Preston and his group of soldiers should be guilty for the murder of the English colonists. All right, defense, your opening argument. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, our testimony is in the defense of the British, for the British only fire at the angry mob to, to defend themselves. So at this time, prosecution, you will call your first witness. Who are we calling? Captain Preston, please step forward. No, nope. prosecution witnesses first. Oh. I'll call your first prosecution witness. So it's either Richard Palms or Henry Knox who we call first. Okay, Richard Palms, please step forward. Please stand up, Mr. Palms. Oh, my bad. Please you place your right hand on this book. Nope, your left hand on this book. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Louder, please. Yes. You may be seated. All right, prosecution, you're a witness. Okay, nope, stand up. Get them up here. Okay. Please approach the bench. Mr. Palms, so you were on... And I'll remind you not to have your back to the jury. Exactly. So, Mr. Palms, you were there on the site. You were there at the site of the massacre. Yes? yes. Yeah. So, how would you say the Captain Thomas Preston's soldiers acted? when they came in? They came in, no warning. They just came in reckless, bayonets out, and they were pushing people to the ground recklessly. So are you telling me that they came in with 
just know with absolute force they didn't treat anybody directly. They didn't try to move people out of the way. They were just shoving people with their bayonets. This shows us that the defense team, that the defendants and Captain Thomas Preston and his soldiers were violently attacking the English colonists. They were there, stationed outside of the townhouse and standing there. They were angry, but the soldiers came in with their bayonets, recklessly moving people around, not taking any care of the colonists. They were just shoving them with their bayonets, not doing anything. Doesn't carry, not me. That's okay. Yeah. What exactly were you doing? So are you objecting or what, yeah, are you cross-examining your, your other lawyer? Yeah. What are you doing? So you're objecting? Yeah. On what grounds? So for what reason are you oh. objecting? Because you're saying that we're like pushing them out of the way and stuff. Okay. And, and I want to know yeah, what you guys are doing at the customs house. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? You asked witnesses this, not the lawyers. Oh. Yeah, so you're okay. So you're objecting just because you want to chime in? No. Okay, all right. So we'll overrule that objection. Um, any further questions? Okay. You may be seated. At this time, defense is your witness. So ask your question. Okay. What were you doing? I was actually just going out for my evening stroll. Sure just walking around. Yeah? yeah. Did you know that? Just happy to be there. Yeah? Yeah. Why are we throwing uh, oysters, golf clubs, and uh, snowballs at them? Um, I don't know. Just because they were unfair yeah. taxes. Yeah, I just, got, I just had it. Just got them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Objection. Yeah. On what grounds? The fact that there were no, they say that we had oysters and clubs. But how is there any evidence that we had oysters and clubs? If we were attacking them with the oysters and all the shells, then there should have been some type of evidence on the ground. That's going to be your job to prove that there weren't. So, overruled. So, do you have further questions? Yeah. Okay. So, at this point, witness, you are dismissed. Prosecution, please call up your next witness. So, who are we calling up? Henry Knox. Okay. So, prosecution is calling up Henry Knox. Can you please swear in the witness. <laughs> Knox, please raise your left hand. Place your right hand on the Bible. I remind you, they'll be ordered. Sorry, Bailey, would you repeat that? Please place your left hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand. Excuse me, I swallowed my gum. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes, you may be seated. Prosecution, it's your witness. Mr. Knox, you're at the scene. Yes. How did Captain Preston present himself as he entered the scene? He was very agitated and he had a great haste to leave the colonists. And did that affect his behavior towards the colonists? How so? He worried that he had a great haste to protect the king's party and he was very angry that the colonists. So what did the captain and the soldiers do with the colonists? The captain said to not fire, but the, um, but the um, soldiers fired. Were you given any warning before the shots were fired? No. No verbal warning or a warning shot? Open the questions. Okay. Defense is your witness.
during your previous testimony, you stated that you grabbed Captain Preston by the coat and threatened him when he was and that threatened his soldiers to fire. Why did you interfere with Captain Preston? I interfered because I thought that there was no need to fire at the bonus. Well, in your testimony, you grabbed him physically, grabbed him, and you shoved him in his face. You threatened him while he was just standing guard, who was following his orders. Well, it was really loud. I felt like he couldn't afford me, so I did yell and grabbed him to get his own. No further questions. Witness, you're dismissed. Defense, you'll now call your first witness. So, who are we calling? Captain Preston. Okay, and now it's the prosecution's witness, even though it's your, it's your witness, but the prosecution's going to ask first, so sit, please. Oh, so, prosecution, it's your question. You're good. You can get sworn in. Captain Preston, please place your left hand on the Bible. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. You may be seated. All right, the prosecution is your witness. Mr. Captain Preston, why, can you please tell me, why did you bring loaded guns to the site? You had charges and you had gunpowder to the side of your muskets. Why did you bring loaded guns to the site, even though you had no intention to fire? Well, it's 9 p.m. and there's a, a angry mob of 100 colonists walking towards the customs house. What else could you be doing other than to cause harm? Well, the, they were there to stop you from collecting the money. There were actually not a hundred colonists, there were 70 to 80 colonists. That doesn't sound like much, there was a very big difference. They didn't have any weapons, they only had snowballs. You were also carrying clubs and bludgeons, which I saw and heard. We only had snowballs. We did not have any type of bludgeoning weapon or any other weapon that could cause harm to the soldiers. We did not want to cause harm. I was informed by a townsman that you had the intention of carrying one of my men off his post and murdering him. We did not have any intention to do that. Alright, so you're the lawyer. You're not going like, to answer for the columnist. You're just going to ask the question. Okay. Right. So, going back on to the musk, the musk, loaded muskets, if you still had them and then you just randomly fired, why was there no warning shot? Did they give any of the columnists a warning shot saying, these are loaded. We we may have some intention to use them. Why was there no warning shot given out by any of the soldiers? I believe that I had told one of the uh, nice colonists who had asked me if they are loaded, and I did say they are loaded. I have another question for you. So, why did you not tell the soldiers to stop firing when you heard them shoot? I did yell, stop firing, cease your fire, but there was so much commotion that night and so many colonists and soldiers were yelling that no one could tell who was yelling what. They, there are many witnesses that say, didn't say, don't fire. You just stood there as they started firing. I was in between the sides trying to prevent conflict between the two sides. So are you saying that you were in the middle of them? Yes. So then why were there no bullets fired at you Why were you not here? That clearly states if you were in the middle, you would have gotten some type of round fired at you. It may have not hit you. It might have caused it might not hit you or caused any external internal damage, but it would have hit the coat or given us some type of way to say that you were there in the front of the musket fire, but you do not have any bullet holes in your coat. That tells me that you were standing off to the side, not in front of any of the columns. I was, hit by, I was hit by a bludgeon by one of your colonists after one of the shots were fired, and I clearly asked him, why did you fire? No further questions. No further questions. Okay. So defense, it's your witness. <clears throat> did you order your soldiers to shoot at the end of the no, in fact, I was in the middle of the battle trying to prevent conflict between the British and the angry mob. What was going through your head before there was fire? I was a little confused because I had not ordered my soldiers to fire. 
your team want to fire the Inman Commons? No, we did not. First, we thought this was kind of a situation we could handle, and then the shots were fired, and then it became a life and death situation after they started throwing snowballs, which could kill us, and then they hit us with clubs and bludgeons, and we did what we had to do. We had to defend ourselves. Witness, you're dismissed. Defense, please call your next witness. Calling Private Hugh Montgomery to the stand. Yes. Private Montgomery, please raise your right hand and place your left hand on the book. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You may be seated. Prosecution is your witness. Mr. Montgomery, if the captain told the soldiers do not fire, how did none of the soldiers here don't fire, including the ones directly behind him, if he was in the middle? Well, there was so much commotion from the angry mob around us that we really couldn't hear anything. Even if someone was directly behind him, they wouldn't have heard? No. Well, he wasn't saying anything, so there was no fire at all. So he didn't command them to fire? They fired by themselves? Yeah. How did the captain react when the soldiers started firing? He told us to stop firing, but we were just firing in self-defense. What, what were the colonists doing with that country to fire in self-defense? They were throwing, they threw a club at me and I fell to the ground. And I thought the only right thing to do was to have self-defense and shoot out. Um, so did Captain Preston order them to fire or did you order them to fire? I didn't order anything. I could have said anything. I honestly don't remember. There was so many calm or so many there was a big mob around us that we really didn't know what was going on. It was too chaotic. Well you had previously stated that you were the one who ordered them to fire and not Captain Preston. I don't really know what I actually did say. I could have said anything really.
based on all the evidence and testimonies from our defense witnesses and our prosecution witnesses, we can conclude that the British soldiers fired out of defense. They weren't doing any harm. They were following their orders and doing their job. The angry mob of colonists came with the intent to violently cause trouble and to and possibly with the intent to murder one of the soldiers. In conclusion, the British soldiers are not guilty of murder. We are acting on self-defense and following our orders. All right, this time the courtroom is going to take a 10 minute recess for the jury. You're going to be dismissed so you can deliberate on your verdict. Let's go. 10 minute recess. Jury, would you please follow me? Jerry, you may take your seat. Wait, this way. Uh, no. It was a How old are these chairs? How old are these chairs? So old. When the building was first built, they were here. Huh? Session. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? I have reached a verdict. We need the jury by the, the defendants, Captain Thomas Preston and Private Hugh Montgomery, guilty. Mind you, there will be order in my courtroom. Right. So, verdict is guilty. So, at this point, we will give the sentencing. Captain Preston, Private Montgomery, would you please stand? Oh, no. <laughs> order! Gentlemen, your sentence is that you shall be hanged by the neck until you are dead. Bailiff, would you please remove them from my courtroom? I shall, Your Honor. Would you please come with me? Okay. President, Private Montgomery, please come with me. <laughs> and God have mercy on your souls. Alright, Hear ye, hear ye, all rise. <laughs> Silence! This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Benjamin Lind, now presiding. You may be seated. This court is now in session. Uh, today we will be hearing the case of the people of Boston versus Captain Thomas Preston and Private Hugh Montgomery, among others. I just wanted to go over the order of operations of the day. So, audience members, you guys are reminded that this is a courtroom of law. If I have to remind you to be silent more than twice, I will remove you, or actually my bailiff me take note <laughs> jury members we thank you for your service uh, you guys if you, at any time you can't hear some of the testimony going on with somebody just raise your hand and I'm going to assume that that's what that is and I'll try to remind them for you legal teams the way this is going to go just a reminder you'll be reminded uh, that the prosecution you're going to go first on everything so prosecution is going to do the opening argument first and then it will be defense's turn prosecution will call their first witness when you call your witness, I'm going to say, prosecution, it's your witness, would you please call them? If someone's going to stand up from the team, they're going to say, we call so-and-so, whoever that is, uh, and then they'll be sworn in by our bailiff. When you're sworn in, the bailiff will go over the order of operations for you, what you have to do, what you have to say. Today, you will all notice, as a witness, you will be sworn in on Pulitzer Prize-winning author David McCullough's John Adams, because of course you should be. Uh, are there any questions from the audience before we get started? All right. 
and I do want to remind you, thank you, Bailiff, I want to remind you that you're not trying to prove your case to me or to the lawyers. You're trying to prove it to the jury. So again, it's most important. As a witness, speak up. As a lawyer, please make sure that you can face both the witness and the jury and that they can hear you. Okay? All right, let's do this thing. So, prosecution at this time, the jury will bring argument. Stand up, please. The original purpose of the 100 Bostonians being at the Customs House was a simple protest of the unfair taxes being pressed against the Congress. The unfortunate escalation that resulted in the protesters throwing snowballs and oyster shells was influenced by the British equipping bayonets and stabbing their way through the crowd. The crowd. Once the British reached the door, they started taking up a defensive position that was unknown to the colonists. Colonists. The position the men had taken was to ready them to open fire at any moment, which they did. The order coming from Captain Thomas Preston left five innocent colonists either dead or dying. That is? Yes. Defense, opening arguments. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Your Nice Honor. and loud, because I can't hear okay. you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Your Honor, it was a dark night on March 5th at 9 p.m. The British soldiers were outside of the Customs House protecting it. The mob of colonists began to confront those soldiers. Of course, the soldiers saw a mob of colonists approaching the Customs House. The soldiers would assume the colonists were trying to rob them. So the soldiers made the decision that they would defend. Doing their duty, doing their duty Captain Thomas Preston, the commanding officer of the Customs House, ordered his men to fix the bayonets. The colonists responded by really attacking and harassing them. They did this by throwing ice, rocks, oyster shells, and clubs at them. The reaction of the British soldiers were fire. If somebody was attacking you, do you think that you would just let them attack, or would you fight back? The shots were from the British soldiers were all of, because of self-defense. It was either attack or be attacked. If the colonists did not go after the soldiers, none of this would have happened. All right, at this time, prosecution, would you call your first witness? Okay, witness, uh, first witness is Henry Knox. Okay, Mr. Knox, would you approach the bench? Hello, sir. Ma'am, sir. Please raise your right hand. Put your left hand on the book. Repeat after me. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I swear to tell the whole truth. The truth? The truth. The whole truth. Nothing but the truth. Thank you. You may be seated. Prosecution is your witness. Okay. So, Henry Knox, where were you the night of the attack? At, at the... <laughs> at the house. house. What were you trying to do when the attack started? Would you like to see your state of what actually would happen? Um, I was the situation escalated when I tried to defuse it. We were trying to the, convince the British soldiers to return to their quarters. Mm -hmm. They had used the bayonets that they had and the top of their guns to push through the crowd. The soldiers rapid fired with no thought of what they were doing. We were doing a non harmful protest, and it slowly escalated to throwing non harmful snowballs. No one knows that they will do this again. There should be more problems. The soldiers were so rough with their bayonets, it looked as if it, it was a Did you hear any calls for fire? I did. What was the call? Fire. Uh, at the Congress. <laughs> okay. Um, so the lobsterbacks shot the colonists without instruction, or as we heard with instruction, poking the colonists with bayonets. Right? Um, other witnesses say that they were partially attacked by bayonets, and the um, the British soldiers were trying to poke everybody, making it point across. Do you believe that prosecuting them would be the perfect option? Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Nash, you're going to state defense is going to now ask questions. 
trying to accomplish by harassing the I just want to remind you guys, it's probably hard to tell, but there's noise from probably three people at the door, so you want to make sure that you're speaking up. Okay, what were you trying to accomplish by harassing the British soldiers? Um, I was not harassing the British soldiers, and we were trying to accomplish a, a non functional protest in the past. How did you try to diffuse attention to the massacre? Um, I tried to convince the British soldiers to return to the borders. At the massacre, where was the fact that the troops standing on People were riding, and the shops were fired. Um, in the middle. So, witness, you're dismissed. Prosecution, would you call your next witness, please? Um, our next witness, our next witness is Richard Palms. Richard Palms. <laughs> Six, raise your right hand. Left hand on the book. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Thank you. You may be seated. Prosecution, it's your witness. Prosecution. Is there a question?
what was also the purpose of the shooting these innocent bystanders? The purpose was to either shoot or we would die because they just kept hitting us with clubs, attacking us with oyster cells, and hitting us with bombs and icy snowballs. Why would, even if you were doing in self defense, why would you stab them in the back while they were turned away from you? Without any warning, just to make the record. Um, we did this just so we could try to control the crowd. We weren't trying to do this, but when they wouldn't cooperate, we had to. nervous and scared like I would die if they just kept attacking us so I thought it's either attack or be attacked and so were the comments also like adding to the mix and saying rude things and yes they were telling us to fire at them while we were just standing there trying to protect the house so when this first happens did you feel threatened that you had many colonists coming towards only a couple of soldiers. I felt very threatened because I thought like we were just trying to do our job and at first I thought they were trying to rob the customs house. No further questions on okay. uh, Witness, you're dismissed. Thank you. Defense, would you please call up your next witness? Thomas Preston. Mm -hmm. Captain Preston, please raise your right hand. I stand on the book. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Be seated. The prosecution is your witness. What were you talking about to our, our witness? 
CPS would be going to load it if we were intending to cause any penalties. I said they were loaded, but we are not intending to uh, cause any construction. They were loaded for safety purposes. Gotcha, guys. So, um, our witnesses say that they were doing a peaceful protest for what they believe in. Wouldn't you do the exact same? I wouldn't peaceful protest, but I don't think it's very peaceful when you pick the pubs that you purposely hit the soldiers with. Um, what do you think about the bayonets being stopped at the innocent colonists? I mean, uh, I mean, I think it would be self-defense. They did it because they were being threatened and they needed protection. Well, they're your soldiers. Soldiers. Don't, they, don't you think that they would come to you first before attacking? I mean, yes, but at the time, that would be the best if you can do it. I remember arriving at the scene from my repairing to the main yard, but when I arrived, I heard a great commotion. I heard horrid threats against the troops. I saw hundreds of people that went to the custom house. They took their clubs and other weapons and threatened to execute the vengeance to, on the sentry. The mob then declared they would murder him. I sent a non-commissioned officer and 12 men to protect both the sentry and the king's money. I would then follow them after. The mob slowly but surely became more aggressive. They would start striking their clubs against one another and yelling a variety of threats. After a soldier who was violently hit by a rioter, he shot without my instruction. After this, I was hit by a club in the arm and in the head. Our lives were in imminent danger, and while I was injured, I was taunted by the rioters. After the incident, I asked the soldiers why they shot. They said it was because they thought they heard me say fire, which I can assure you I did not say, and which I can only assume was the mob taunting with the word fire. If anything, I said not to. During the massacre, what were you telling the soldiers and where were you standing to try to control the fire? I was telling the soldiers to not fight. I was screaming it from my position. I was standing in between the colonists and the soldiers. How did you react when you heard them start firing? Um, at the time, I was injured, and I started screaming not fire or to not fire, and I was very surprised that they fired. Why did you wait to say or do anything after the first shot? Because there was a minute or two in the train. I did try. I tried to scream not firing, but the, there was so much uh, rapid going on with all the things of colonists that they probably didn't hear. Prosecution at this time, you're going to make your closing statement. <laughs> In conclusion, these criminals should be hung for the atrocities they committed against not only the city of Boston, but the entirety of the colonies under British control. Considering the five innocent people died as a result of neglecting and malice towards the British soldiers should be of the British soldiers should be alone should be one reason to, pros to prosecute these men, but also consider the fact that they essentially stabbed their way through a crowd, injuring many in the process. Defense, would you please make your closing statement? Ladies and gentlemen, Your Honor, in conclusion, the soldiers fired in self-defense against the colonists. This evidence shows that the colonists had provoked the soldiers by attacking them with snow snowballs filled with ice, clubs, oysters, and rocks. Many of the columns were also yelling the rude things and telling us to fire at them, to try and confuse the soldiers. The soldiers were just doing their job, defending the custom house in this century. They could have thought that the columns were trying to rob them to get the money back. Eventually, kids run away, and the real attack begins. In the order of the chaos of the massacre, the colonists were daring them to fire and provoke in the soldiers. The way the soldiers were looking at this, as if they didn't fire, they would have been killed. When you have that much adrenaline in your system, then you make decisions out of shock. The captain was standing between the colonists and the soldiers yelling, don't fire, because if they did fire, he would get hit in the back. The massacre was clearly in self-defense. Captain Thomas Preston was injured, and they thought they were going to get killed. Also, if the colonists did not show up in the first place, did not want to cause trouble, and did not try to harass the soldiers, None of this would have happened in the first place. Thank you for your time. All right, at this time, the courtroom's going to take a 10 minute recess while the jury deliberates on their verdict. So, our bailiff will remove you guys from.
courtroom. If you happen to finish coming up with your verdict before the time, would someone just please come and get me? All right, 10 minute recess. Please follow me. Yes, you should be. Thank you. Thank you. No. Thank you. Thank you. All rise, this court is back in session. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have. Please. We, the jury, find the defendants, Captain Thomas Preston and Private Hugh Montgomery, not guilty. Case dismissed. Court is now in session. The Honorable Benjamin Lind presiding. You may be seated. Today, this court will hear the case of the people of Boston versus Captain Thomas Preston and Private Hugh Montgomery. Now, I'm going to explain how the order of operations is going to go. Prosecution is always going to go first, so they will start with their opening statement, and they will be followed by the defense. Every time that we kind of switch it up from when we go to a different witness, it's always going to be the prosecution that's going to go first. So at this time, prosecution, you may make your opening statement. And you're going to stand up, yep. Probably want to come up here because just that way you can kind of talk to the whole audience. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Your Honor, March 5th, men left their home expecting to come back. But due to the horrific murder committed that night, for some people, that didn't happen. Five people never got to see their family again, and five families never got to see their loved ones again. We are all fully aware that the colonists arrived at the scene that haunted horrid night, but colonists by no means deserved to face death. It was as simple as the colonists already feeling threatened by the British soldiers in the colonies, on top of all the stress from the unjust taxes. A few harmless snowballs being thrown that night did not need to escalate to cold, pure murder. Now I'm at a loss to why getting a fluffy snowball tossed at Hugh Montgomery would make him feel so threatened that he needed to fire a loaded, deadly gun. An extreme weapon such as a gun that night was horribly unnecessary, and if the soldiers felt so threatened that they if the soldiers felt so threatened, they could have thrown snowballs and stayed equal with the colonists. Instead, the soldiers opted to take five lives from five innocent people. Five lives lost. Five people gone. Thank you. You don't, you don't have to clap. You don't have to clap. <laughs> Thank you, though, for your enthusiasm. Um, okay, defense, would you make your opening statement? Please? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Your Honor, March 5th, 9 p.m. at night, soldiers were on guard at the King's Custom House, where the King's money was being held. When an unruly mob of colonists confronted them, the soldiers called for assistance. When the other soldiers arrived, a hundred more people joined the angry mob and started throwing rocks, oyster shells, ice balls, and hitting them with clubs. Then the soldiers acted in self-defense. At this time, prosecution is going to call its first witness. When you call a witness, one of the lawyers, you're going to stand up, you're going to say, we call, and then whoever it is that you're going to call to the stand. Witnesses, you guys are going to first approach the bench, which this is your witness stand over here, this nice comfy chair. We figure you guys are already uncomfortable enough, might as well at least give you a comfy chair to sit. And then Emma, our bailiff, she's going to swear each of you in. She's going to place this book, Pulitzer Prize winning David McCullough's John Adams. You should all read this someday. She's going to place this book in her left hand. She's going to ask you, please place your left hand on the book. Please raise your right hand. And then she's going to give you uh, an oath that she, she wants you to, to say. Okay? So, Emma, I'll give that to you. And prosecution, would you call your first witness, please? We call Richard Palms. So, Mr. Palms, you approach the bench. <coughs> you can be sworn in. Oh, hold on. Before you sit, buddy, she's going to swear you in. 
Can you place your left hand on the book? So you, Ainsley, you don't have to do that. Okay. The just the witnesses. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You may be seated. Prosecution, your witness. Go ahead. Did Captain Preston order his men to fire? No, but I heard somebody say it before. Did you see or hear Captain Preston order his men to stop? No, I did not. Yep, you can say that. Oh, you can't hear him. Okay, let's start over. So, Braden, just be a little bit louder so they can hear you, okay? okay. Did Captain Preston order his men to fire? No, but I did hear the word fire. Did you see or hear Captain Preston order his men to stop? Uh, no, nothing until the second shot was fired. I'd like to make it clear that Richard Ponce just stated that a professional, Captain Preston, he did not order his men to stop. Not after two shots were fired. Did you purposely try to injure any of the soldiers? Soldiers? I only struck um, after that they tried to uh, kill them with their bayonets. So what he said was he only only struck out with the colonists oh, so after the yeah after they had already hit him. Okay. Just want to be as nice and loud as you can. Uh, right. No further questions? No. Okay. So you're going to stay put. Ainsley, you're going to sit. Defense, it's your witness. So, Mr. Ponce, did Captain Pressman say fire? So he didn't say fire. So the soldier, soldiers fired on their own. Uh, well, I didn't hear the word fire. But Who was saying it? The crowd or Captain Pressman or a soldier? I couldn't make out who, 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 who said it, but... So, you heard the word fire a lot, right? Like, from a bunch of different people. Yeah. So, what, do you think that it would be mildly possible that a, sol that a soldier who is getting attacked by the mob of colonists, who, who said fire, don't, don't fire, yeah, they said fire, don't you think that maybe after they got hit with a snowball, which does kind of does get cold when it's 40 degrees at night? So why did so? Don't you think that maybe that soldier could have thought that maybe it was his captain after he got hit with the head with the snowball? So do you think that that soldier could have thought after he got hit, his captain was responding to him getting hit with a snowball? Um, they, um, it had to be one of the soldiers. That's why. All right, no more questions. No more questions. So at this time, Mr. Palms, you can go back and sit down. Prosecution, would you please call your next witness? I'd like to call up Henry Knox. All right. Mr. Knox, please approach the bench. Now you can serve. Please place your left hand on the book. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. You may be seated. All right, Mr. Knox. Where were you that night? I was with um, Captain Preston that night. Did you hear anyone say the word fire? No, it was hard to understand. All right. How did Captain Preston and the soldiers appear to you that night? Captain Preston was filled with, um, filled with anger and had a great face. What about the soldiers? They were stabbing the colonists with their bayonets. See, Jerry, already, before the guns were fired, the soldiers were already angry at the colonists. So this proves this was no Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Defense is your witness. Was it chaotic that night? Yes. What were you throwing at the soldiers? I wasn't throwing anything at the soldiers. Not getting snowballs? A little louder. No, I wasn't throwing snowballs. You weren't throwing snowballs? No. Okay. Was the crowd throwing snowballs? Yes, they were. Any, any, are they throwing anything Still else? Still louder, guys. So, hey, let's restart. Was it chaotic that night? Yes, it was very chaotic that night. Louder. You guys aren't getting any louder. Was it chaotic that night? Yes, it was very chaotic there that we go. night. 
Were the, was the crowd throwing anything? The crowd was throwing snowballs at the soldiers. And the British pushed them back with their bayonets? Yes. Do you know how scared the cops the, um, were? They were getting very scared. So why didn't they run away? I don't know, because they wanted to um, win the battle. So they wanted to start a fight? Yes. No further questions? Okay. So, witness your dismissal. <coughs> Alright, at this time, defense, can you please call your first witness? Can you call him? No, you gotta call your first witness. So, prosecution's gonna ask first, but who's your first okay. witness that you're calling? Stand up and tell me. Captain Thomas Preston. Okay. So, Captain Preston, please approach the bench. You may be sworn in. Place your left hand on the book. When you raise your right hand, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. You may be seated. Prosecution is your witness. So, Captain Preston, where, when you showed up, well, why did you show up? Oh, sorry. You just want to be able to face here. Okay. Why did you show up in the first place? I showed up because I got word of a townsfolk that this angry mob, of an, organized, an organized angry mob of at least 100 colonists were planning on dragging one of our soldiers from his post and brutally murdering him. So you showed up because the colonists were there? Yes. And was the situation, were they throwing anything? <coughs> yes, they were throwing ice balls, rocks, and hitting us with bludgeons. So not just snowballs? No, not just snowballs. Huh. Were any of your soldiers hit by it? Yes, one was struck across the head, and the other one was hit uh, so hard against the soldier, uh, so hard against his shoulder, they slipped on ice and fell to the ground. Was that the soldier that fired the first shot? Yes. Do you think that he fired because he got hit? Uh, I think that, yes, I do think he fired because he was hit. I think that my soldiers would not defy my order. They would only shoot if they feared for their life. I, I did not order them to fire, nor did I even order them to load their weapons. So you didn't order them to fire. You fired anyway because of self-defense and because you got hit by a club? Yes. No more questions. So defense, it's your witness. Oh, excuse me. Did we go first? Defense went first? Okay. It should have been prosecution went first. That's okay. Uh, prosecution, your witness. Why did you let shots be fired without stopping your, so your soldiers? I didn't just let shots be fired. I was in the center trying to separate these angry colonists from hitting more of my so more of my men. Did you advise your shoulder your soldiers to fire at people that were running away? They were not running away. They were coming closer. After we had told them to back away, and even after they refused to, we I ordered them to take out their bayonets. We were we began to swing them around and tell them to back off, but they still wouldn't back away. Shouldn't you be able to endure a snowball or understand the difference between a snowball and a deadly weapon? Well, these weren't just snowballs. They were deadly weapons threatening to harm my soldiers. If they were planning on killing one of, of my men, they could have all, why not, many more. Captain Preston, you're dismissed. Defense, would you call your next witness? So defense calls Private Hugh Montgomery to the stand. Please place your left hand on the book. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. You may be seated. Prosecution is your word. Hello, Mr. Montgomery. How are you doing? Why did you fire at the colonists? I felt threatened. Felt threatened. By what? Snowballs? Snowballs, rocks, and clubs. Did you hear Captain Preston say stop firing after the second shot? No. Why did you think you should order the soldiers to fire? I ordered the soldiers to fire after I heard the word fire. Who did you hear the word fire though? I heard it at the time I thought it was from my captain, and now that I look back at it, it was from one of the colonists. From the colonists? Well, you told your lawyer uh, that you said, damn, fire on after you fired your first shot. So you remember that? Yes. No further questions. Defense is your witness. 
Did you say fire? Yes. Okay, so who do you think it was? Nice and loud, yes. Okay, and do you have any, do you think it was anyone else now? Yes. Louder. One of the colonists. Okay, how do you like your job in the colonies? Um, I like my job as just a, how is it difficult? Um, my job is to watch the tax collectors in the colonies because the colonists <coughs> like to attack them and tar and feather them. So do you dislike the colonists? I don't dislike the colonists, they just make my job very difficult. Witness, you're dismissed. All right, at this time, prosecution is going to make its closing statement. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury and your honor, after this horrific event, a massacre of innocent people died at the hands of Captain Thomas Preston and his soldiers. These irresponsible soldiers had an overreaction to fluffy snowballs thrown at them, the same snowballs which children play with. These poor and homeless colonists will never see the loving families again because of the bloodthirsty soldiers and Captain Preston's poor leadership. Mr. Samuel Gray, Chris, Crispus Addicts, Mr. James Calgram, Mr. Samuel Maverick, and Mr. Patrick Carr, all killed because of those angry, paced men. Bloodthirsty soldiers that were wanted them dead since the colonists got there. And the soldiers got what they wanted. And Jerry, if you let these men slash murderers walk, you don't know what shame you brought to this colony. No further, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> Defense, closing arguments. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Your Honor, today two men were tried for murder. They killed people, yes, but it was in self-defense. They were being attacked with clubs, snowballs, ice balls, with clamshells being called lobster bats. If you let, if you let them take the blame, because colonists were angry at them and wanted them out. So, at this time, we're going to take a 10 minute recess. Like I said, this is not like a regular recess. All rise. The court is now in session. The Honorable Benjamin Lind presiding. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Would you please stand up and would you please read that verdict <coughs> to the court? We, the jury, find the defendants. Captain Thomas Preston in private Hugh Montgomery. Not, not guilty. guilty. Yes! <laughs> Alright, so, to be clear, Captain Preston and his, his men in general, because there's actually more soldiers, guys, than just these two, but Captain Preston and his men have been found not guilty, so they are not going to be in any trouble. At this point, that means that this case is dismissed, okay? So, court is adjourned, that would mean that it's over.